Hey friends, it is Deborah, and welcome to your beginner to spine mobility workout. I was really excited about today's workout because I have been wanting to break down the elements of spinal mobility and spinal strength with a workout that could be done for those of you that who are healing from injuries in their spine. Perhaps you have a herniated disc or you have had some sort of spinal injury, could be scoliosis, and you really are just wanting to understand the movements of the spine as well as your abdominal engagement in order to help you get more stability and more strength and just better upright posture. Now, if you are healing from an injury, I just ask that you have gotten the go-ahead from your occupational or physical therapist to embark on to long-term care. And if you're here for just general body mobility, then this is such an important workout to practice to be able to not only engage your abdominals, folks, there are four layers of abdominals and we are focusing on that very first layer, the transverse abdominals. That is the layer that is closest to the spine and it's really the layer that does majority of the stability work and of the strength work. Again, uh, we always want those six pack abs, but they are nothing compared to the importance of the transverse abdominals. So don't you worry, you're gonna be able to know at the end of this video what your transverse abdominals are and how they function in relative to your spinal mobility and you're gonna grow stronger in them. So that's gonna be super excited. And I, then we're gonna move on to actual spinal movement. So we're gonna go through flexion, extension, as well as lateral side bends because I want you to see again how those transverse abdominals operate while you move your spine in various different motions, all right? I'm super excited for today's workout. So if you are here with me today, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for uh, making it here today. Roll out your mat and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and begin by just coming to a seated position. We're gonna draw the arms on out and we're gonna roll down to our mat one vertebrae at a time till you find yourself in a nice supine position on your mat. You're gonna have all four corners of your feet rooted down. And from here, this position, I wanna make sure that if you have an excess curve in your spine, you can go ahead and roll a towel on up to help support. Everybody's lower back curve is different. So if you do have a more predominant lower back curve, you are gonna to wanna to place a towel or something to a degree as, as you press your lower back into the ground that you don't have to go so, so far that you're throwing your thigh bones out of socket, your pelvis is moving out of its neutral pelvic tilt. To begin, let's go ahead and take our fingertips and find the tops of the hip bones and the inside of the tops of the hip bones. And I want you to press down to the ground. The more you press, I want you to pull your abdominals away from your fingertips, moving them all the way to your lower back. You might feel some resistance from your hip flexors. That just means that you might have some tightness and tightness in the hip flexors and weakness in the lower abs. So by continuing to press the fingertips into your body, you're gonna go ahead and continue to draw your abs away from them and pull them to the ground. These top ribs are knitted in. So this entire region of your torso, the abs are pulling all the way to the spine. Think of your hips in saran wrap and you're trying to tighten the saran wrap. From this position now, we're gonna move into, now that we have our abs engaged, hands behind the nape of the neck, point your toes. Let's go ahead and lift on up. This becomes our spinal flexion. These top ribs are knitted in, but again, the abs are being pulled all the way to the lower, or to the spine, lower abs, lower back, middle abs, middle of the spine, upper abs, right through to the ribs, all the way to the spine. So you might end up getting some more mobility. So you can come up a little higher, 
You might feel your body shaking a little bit. That's good. We want your abs to be working. You're not, use, you're not pulling on your neck. Your abs are engaged to lift you on up. And you're continuing to hug them all the way to the spine. Keep pointing your toes. Can you feel yourself shaking? This is a great strengthening exercise. The more we strengthen these abdominals, the more they are going to continue to protect your spine. We'll lower all the way on down. Come on up into our tabletop position. We want our shoulders over our wrist and our hips over our knees. Shoulders in line with the middle finger and eyes of the elbows towards the thumb. You can tuck your toes on under. Again, you're looking to keep those transverse abdominals engaged from this tabletop position. We are in neutral spine. So as if your hands were still pushing into your abdominals, pull them all the way to your lower back here, to your middle back here, and to your upper back here. These top ribs stay knitted in. This is pure tabletop position. Now you can really feel your abdominals in this acting as a shelf for your spine. Now we're gonna go ahead and lift the knees up for two inches off the ground. You instantly should make sure that your abs stay engaged and you should feel them right away. Yeah, feel it? Good. Keeping your back flat, you're not trying to distribute the weight from the abdominals, you're really engaging them, lifting them, lifting them, lifting them. You should be shaking. Exhale, breathe. Inhale again. Exhale. Make sure that you press into the base of the knuckles. Now we're going to lower down. Neutral position. We're going to move into cat-cow. Full flexing into cat. Rounding the back. And then inhaling to come into cow, our extension. Now I want to try to keep our hips as neutral as they can be. I don't have too flexible of an upper back, so this is a great exercise for me to practice as well. But the more I begin to neutral, keep my lower abs engaged to keep my pelvis neutral, I can really move the upper spine to get more mobility. So you move through how your spine works. Yeah. All right. Bends and flexes and it extends. Everybody's spine has a different degree of mobility. All right. Back to neutral uh, tabletop. Lift your knees on up two inches again. We're gonna move into those same cat cows. So keeping your abs engaged, rounding like a cat. Coming down into cow. Again, you're gonna to wanna to take the energy off of your abs and we need to keep the abs engaged. This one's hard, isn't it? That's why I put it in here. Not only you're getting an ab workout, but you're really beginning to see at the areas in which you're weak and the where that you need to develop more strength for your spine, more stability. Inhale as you go to cow, exhale as you round. Inhale to cow. And then we'll come back to neutral. Tail wags, we're going to go ahead and bring our leg on up. We're gonna follow and trace the big toe with our eyes. Moving into lateral side bending. So not only does the spine flex and extend, but it moves side to side. But don't lose your abdominal connection. Even though we're using a bit more obliques, now we're gonna trace the other way. 
we are still having to keep that neutral pelvic tilt, those abs all the way to the ceiling. Yeah, I see you, just like that. This is one of my favorite moves. Not only does it help mobilize my hips, but it really helps you really see laterally how the spine can move and how and at what point your abs might want to give. All right, other leg. We're gonna follow and trace with our eyes. How are you doing? You getting more familiar with your body? way. You can definitely feel stiffness. Oh, that loosened on up for me, but again, I'm pulling my abs all the way to the ceiling so I can feel my hip just freed up. Must have been a tight hip flexor on that side. All right, now we're gonna come down to our lateral flexion. So lie back down, extend the arm on out. Make sure that you're comfortable on your hip and lift those legs on up. Stabilize the other arm here and lift the arm on up. So here we have our lateral flexion. And squeezing muscle to bone, keep drawing those abs. Now all the way to the back of the room, you'll really feel the difference in your stabilization of not only your pelvis, but keep those top ribs knitted in. You can really feel how it's not just your obliques working you here, it's those transverse abdominals which are stabilizing your spine. Yep, just like that, you got it, you got it. Taking out those wobbles, taking out them wobbles. All right, exhale. Inhale, lengthen, reach on out. Exhale. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All right, now we're gonna do the other side. Finding that comfortable position on your hips, you're going to lift the legs on up, bring the arm on up, Again, drawing those abs in all the way to your spine. Yeah, a little less, a little more wobbly on this side. This would make sense for me. My left hip is pretty weak, injured. So I'm gonna see if I can pull my abs in even more. There we go, I feel a bit more stable. I do have some scoliosis on my spine. So I just know I need to account for that. Draw my upper ribs knitted in. There we go, I have a little bit more freedom. Yes. Look at you. You got it. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And come all the way on down. Now we're gonna end with our upward facing dog, hand behind by the sides of the ribs. We're gonna knit those top ribs in again. You're gonna press into the knuckles and you're gonna reach on up. You're gonna keep extending your heart forward as you draw your tailbone to your feet. Again, keeping those abs all the way into your spine. You're not gonna lift, you're not gonna let them sag. You're drawing them all the way to your spine. You can lift on up if you can go high. You're gonna extend all the way on up. This is a nice spinal extension. Great hip flexor stretch, but a great extension of the spine. You might not be all the way there. You might only be here, that's fine. Again, you're drawing those abs into the spine. You're not letting the ribs flare out. 
You're engaging the abdominals. It's a great stretch for the abs, but really have to use the transverse abdominals so you don't compress the vertebrae. You just use them to protect the spine and come all the way on down. Whew. Great job, that was awesome. I hope you really learned about the different ways in which your abdominals need to support the spine as you move from flexion to extension to lateral side bending. It's really, really interesting how quickly we can lose engagement with our abs. So the more that you pr practice this workout, the more you're really gonna build that mind-body connection to help yourself grow stronger, really get more connected to your transverse abdominals, get more familiar with your own spine mobility. I don't have too flexible of an upper back, so I know for me those cow poses are more challenging when I'm coming out of a, ca a cat rounded back, but my spinal extension and upward facing dog took me a long time to get, but I'm really happy with the way it's progressing and it's really helped myself get more open, improve my posture, and really helped me to begin to recorrect, at least for me, my scoliosis. So again, I hope you found this video helpful and uh, if you haven't quite yet subscribe to a-line postures let me know in the comments below what you want to work on next so i love you all and i will see you next week bye